Welcome back to another fun episode of Indie Reads Aloud. Today we have another children's book author. I love sharing children's story time because first of all, it, it helps me go back to when I was a little kid and who doesn't like to do that? And then uh, it, it's also just a great way to expose young people to the written work. Today, we have Nicole Patrice Thomas coming back to visit with us again. She has been here before with her fantasy series, and now she's going to do her children's book with us. So welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're back. Nice to see you again. This is so much fun. And I need to just say congratulations on your new edition coming soon. Um, probably by the time this episode airs, he'll already be here. So congratulations on being a mom for the second time. Thank you. So exciting. You'll have to send pictures later. Oh, I'll definitely post them. Awesome. <laughs> so let me tell everybody a little bit about Patrice. It, I'm sorry. I keep wanting to call you Patrice. I don't know why I'm, I'm okay. skipping right over the word Nicole and I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe we've met in a former life with a former Maybe. name. Maybe. Maybe. A lot of people. A lot of people call me Patrice, so it's okay. Okay, well, I'm going to try and force myself to learn. Uh, it could be said that Nicole Patrice Thomas was born with a book in her hand. Reading has always been her favorite pastime. Whether a physical copy or an ebook, she's never far from a current read. That love led her to creating a world where anything is possible with enough faith, and she creates her stories out of a love for reading and mixing in that faith, which I really love. This is just such great messages for young people. Just so yeah. cool. Um, the book she's going to be reading today is called The Flower Girl. It's a wonderful picture book. I got to um, kind of sneak some some previews um, on the Amazon link of the pictures. Pictures are just glorious. Yeah, the illustrator did a fabulous job. What is the illustrator's name? Alwashish Sajid. They did do an excellent job on this. I mean, the pictures are just gorgeous. Um, so let me tell everybody a little bit about the book. Grace is learning about obedience. It is a little rule with big consequences, if not followed. Your child will learn, along with Grace, what can happen when we forget to obey. Grace loves flowers and chocolate chip cookies. She likes to collect flowers for her mother, and her mother loves to make cookies for Grace. One day, she was doing just that. Grace forgot a very important rule. How will she get back home now? Okay, so the tension mounts. First of all, there are chocolate chip cookies on the line here. Exactly. <laughs> and then the idea of being lost is an even greater consequence. Yeah. I'm super excited to hear you read this story. When you are ready, please take the microphone and read aloud. Thank you. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, a little girl named Grace lived with her parents in a house on top of a hill. Lots of purple and pink flowers surrounded the house. One sunny day, Grace was playing outside as her mother cleaned the front yard. Sweetheart, listen to me carefully. Please stay where I can see you and don't go into the woods. Do you understand? Grace's mother told her. Yes, mommy, I understand, Grace replied while picking flowers and running about. Grace spotted a big, beautiful white flower. That's not so far away, Grace thought as she turned to look back at her mother. I will still be able to see mommy from there. So she ran over and picked the white flower. Just as she was about to go back to the garden, she saw an even bigger red flower off in the distance. Looking back at her mother again, Grace said to herself, that's not so far away. I can still see mommy. So she skipped a little further and picked the red flower. Again, Grace was getting ready to go back to her mother to show her the lovely basket of white and red flowers, but she saw a rainbow colored flower. I have never seen a rainbow flower, Grace said to herself. 
My mommy would love that one. And it's not too far away. I'll be really fast. She quickly ran to pick the rainbow colored flower. But when she turned back around, she could not see her mother at all. Oh no, Grace cried. Mommy, mommy, where are you? Grace turned around and around in a circle. She looked to the left, then to the right, but she could not see her mother anywhere. Oh, what will I do, Grace said as she continued to cry. While she sat under a tree, a bluebird flew down from a branch above her. Why are you crying, little girl? asked Mr. Bluebird. I'm lost. I can't find my mommy anywhere, Grace cried. What does your house look like? Mr. Bluebird asked. Well, it is a large white house on top of a hill and it has purple and pink flowers all around it, Grace said. Okay, little girl, I will fly and try to find your home, but you must stay here until I get back to help you get home. Do you understand? Mr. Bluebird asked. Oh, thank you, yes, I understand. I will wait for you here by the tree, Grace said. Mr. Bluebird flew up, up, up into the sky. He searched far and wide for the little girl's home. And when he came back, Grace was nowhere to be found. Little girl, little girl, I have found your home. Where are you? He called for her, but she was not there. Oh no, she did not listen to me. Now she is even more lost. Shaking his head, Mr. Bluebird hopped into his nest for the night. Because Mr. Bluebird took so long to come back, Grace thought she could find her way home by herself. So she walked and walked, but she wandered even farther away from home. Oh no, I'm so scared. I will never see my mommy again, Grace cried. But then she saw a red fox. Oh, Mr. Red Fox, Mr. Red Fox, can you help me please? I am lost and I cannot find my way home. Hush now, do not cry. I will help you. What does your home smell like? Mr. Red Fox asked. It smells like chocolate chip cookies. My mommy always makes me chocolate chip cookies. I miss my mommy and daddy so much, Grace said. All right, little girl, I will use my nose to find your home, but you must stay here by my burrow and wait for me. Do you understand? asked Mr. Fox. Oh, thank you. Yes, I understand. I will wait for you here, Grace shouted while jumping joyfully. Mr. Red Fox ran off into the woods, sniffing the ground as he went. Finally, he found the little girl's house. He followed the scent of chocolate chip cookies to the window and saw Grace's mother and her father sitting at the table. Her mother was crying and her father looked very sad. I must hurry back to the little girl, Mr. Red Fox said to himself. Her parents are so worried about her. He ran as fast as he could back to the burrow, but Grace was nowhere to be found. Oh no, she did not listen to me, Mr. Red Fox said as he shook his head and looked out into the darkening forest. Now she is even more lost. Feeling sad, Mr. Red Fox climbed into his burrow for the night. Even farther away, Grace walked and walked until she was tired. The flowers she picked had lost all their petals. Her shirt was dirty, her jeans had a hole, and her feet hurt. So she sat down underneath a large tree and began to cry. Oh, someone help me. Please help me get home, she cried loudly. Hoot, hoot, hoot. Who is crying so loudly by my tree? Said a voice high above her. It is me down here, Grace replied. Mother Owl, I am so lost. And how did you who get lost? Mother Owl asked. Grace stopped crying and began to think. My mother was planting new flowers in our garden. She told me that I could play but not go into the woods. I went to pick a pretty flower and then another and then another. When I looked up, 
I could not see my home or my mother anywhere. Then Mr. Bluebird found me and tried to help me, but I did not listen to him. Mr. Red Fox tried to help me too, but I did not listen to him either. I did not listen when they all told me to stay put. Will you help me, Mother Owl? I promise to listen this time. I just want to go home. Grace begged, crying even harder. Ooh, ooh, hush now, child. I will help you get home safely, but you must stay here until I return for you. It is important that you listen. It is very dangerous to be so far into the woods all alone. Do you understand, little girl, Mother Owl asked? Oh, yes. I promise to stay right here by your tree until you come back for me. I promise, Mother Owl, I promise. Grace said as she sat down under the tree. Mother Owl flew away to find Mr. Bluebird and Mr. Red Fox. She flew and flew, looking all over for them. Finally, she saw Mr. Bluebird resting in his nest. Hoo, hoo. Wake up, Mr. Bluebird. I have found the little girl and we must get her home. Together, they flew off to find Mr. Red Fox. They landed on the tree next to the burrow where Mr. Red Fox lived with his family. Hoo, hoo. Wake up, Mr. Red Fox. I have found the little girl and we must get her home. Why should I help her? She did not listen to me when I tried to help her before. I want to go back to sleep. What if it was one of your baby foxes lost? Wouldn't you want someone to help him get home to you? Mother Owl softly responded. Mr. Red Fox looked down at his barrel and thought about his babies sleeping soundly in their beds. You are right, Mother Owl. I will help you get the little girl home safely. Together, Mother Owl, Mr. Bluebird, and Mr. Red Fox returned to find Grace asleep underneath the tree. Woo, woo. Wake up, little girl. It is time to go home now. Mr. Bluebird and Mr. Red Fox are here to help you. Mother Owl said softly as she lightly brushed her wing across Grace's tear-stained cheek. Thank you, Mother Owl. Thank you, Mr. Bluebird. Thank you, Mr. Red Fox. I'm sorry I did not listen to you when you tried to help me. I'm sorry I did not listen to mommy. I will listen better now. Together, the four of them started walking through the forest. Soon Grace saw the purple and pink flowers that surrounded her home. She began to smell the chocolate chip cookies her mother had made. I'm home, I'm home, Grace shouted as she ran up the hill. Grace's parents threw open the door and when they saw their daughter, they ran down the hill towards her. Sweetheart, her mother cried out. Grace, her father said. Mommy, daddy, I was so scared. I'm sorry I did not listen to you in the garden when you could see me. I'm so, so sorry. Grace cried as she hugged her parents tightly. Grace's parents thanked Mr. Bluebird, Mr. Red Fox, and Mother Owl for helping their precious daughter make it home safely. Grace's mother and father took her into the house to get all cleaned up. Then her parents gave her a giant plate of chocolate chip cookies and a glass of milk. They were disappointed she had not been obedient but so very glad to have her home safe. When it was time for bed, her father kissed her goodnight and tucked her in. Her mother kissed her and asked what she learned that day. I learned it is important to listen to you and daddy. I must obey instructions to keep me safe and listen to those who are trying to help me. And I learned it is very important to always stay where you can see me, Grace said, before falling fast asleep. And Thank you very much. What a great story. Oh my <laughs> gosh, what, how wonderful. What was your favorite part about writing this book? 
Um, I enjoyed writing all of it. It started off as a bedtime story for my daughter mm-hmm. and it kind of just blossomed into this. So really just getting all the little parts down and instilling the lessons that I feel are so important for our kids to know um, in the world that we live in, just breaking it down in a way that's understandable for them and relatable. Sure, absolutely. I, I think this is a wonderful story. It does teach an important lesson and, and it does it in a really fun way too. Um, for those of you who are interested in finding Nicole's book, you can check out the show notes and you'll find links to the book and to Nicole's website as well. Thank you so much for coming out to read aloud to us today. I'm so glad you came back. Thank you again for having me again. Have a wonderful night. You too.